Good morning. I'm Kevin Walker, Senior Vice President of Public Policy for the Overland Park Chamber. With me today is Lindsay Weiss, a candidate for Blue Valley Board of Education. Today we're going to spend some time getting to know Lindsay and learn about her candidacy and her priorities if elected to the school board. Lindsay, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's start by having you take a few minutes to introduce yourself and tell us why you're running for the Blue Valley School Board. Sure, I'd love to. Um, my name is Lindsay Weiss. I am first and foremost a mom to three kids in the Blue Valley District. Uh, I have one at each level, elementary, middle, and high school. Married to Jeff, a Blue Valley graduate, and we both own small businesses in the Blue Valley area. Um, I think with, with the three kids and, and the businesses in the area, we have a vested interest in preserving our tradition of excellence in Blue Valley and just keeping it great. Um, I've spent over 10 years volunteering at all levels in our Blue Valley schools, from the classroom to PTO roles to district level committees. Um, and I think that's given me context for doing, for, for knowing what we're doing well and what we need to improve upon. And I think that's the perspective we, we need in a board member. Good. Well, let's transition to a few questions and uh, tell us, you know, as a candidate, what are your top policy priorities? Oh, great question. I think in the near term, um, the most important policy issue would be identifying and mitigating our pandemic-related um, learning loss. I think we're just beginning to get a handle on what that looks like for all of our kids and have some good plans in place to tackle that. Um, but I think the board's role will be strategic oversight as that happens this year and holding ourselves accountable for doing that. I think my second priority would be attracting and retaining good teachers. I am the daughter of two public school teachers, the sister of one. I think teachers are the secret sauce that sort of make our district great. That's really important. Um, and I think the third and, and maybe most important issue is supporting our strategic plan. It sounds really boring, but there are so many things in Blue Valley's strategic plan, even this year, that we're not getting to talk about right now because there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on, but really cool things like um, we're doing a whole new math curriculum for K through 5. We're reevaluating the entire high school experience from the classes they take to what the day looks like. These are really important things that we need patron feedback on, and I look forward to being able to focus on those kinds of things. Let's talk about funding for a minute. The Kansas Supreme Court ruled the K through 12 education funding formula is both equitable and adequate. Uh, however, they retain jurisdiction over the case to make sure that funding is maintained. What are your thoughts on the formula and the additional funding that's been added recently? I think at the end of the day, I mean, public schools are, um, are the heart of a community. When we look at why Overland Park is, is often named one of the top ten cities to live in, the public schools are one of the main criteria, right? People move to Blue Valley for the schools, so I think it is imperative that we continue to advocate for funding. I'm happy that the court got involved to regulate and make sure we have consistent funding. I think continuing that, that, that funding impacts kids, teachers, parents, and, and taxpayers in our community. It's imperative that we continue that. And along with funding comes accountability, and we know K through 12 education system requires accountability measures for student performance, and sometimes that's been a source of debate. Uh, so can you talk about the accountability measures you support and that you believe are accurately reflective of student achievement? Mm -hmm. I think uh, as, as a public school district, we should welcome accountability measures like uh, state and national assessments, ACT scores, graduation rates. Um, when combined as a total picture, they, they help us understand how we're doing and whether or not our curriculum is really achieving its objectives. Um, I think also looking at the success of some of our non-traditional programs is also an important measure of achievement that may not always kind of show up on a test score. Um, Blue Valley Academy, our JCCC trade and tech programs, the 18 to 21 school, matriculation from these programs is a huge win because they account for students that may or may not have scored well on an achievement test but have found success regardless. We all know that Kansas is experiencing low unemployment rates right now and employers are struggling to find qualified workers, especially in the skilled and technical trades. Mm -hmm. How do you see the school district helping to meet the business community's workforce needs? Well, Blue Valley has always been well known for preparing students for college. But we also know that college is not for everyone, right? And we've made great strides in our uh, cooperative education partnerships that give our students really in-demand skills. 
um, things like fire science, welding, automotive technology, construction management. Um, we also have the Center for Advanced Professional Studies. It allows students to dig deeper into more technical careers, business and technology, engineering and medicine. We even have a program where students can get their CNA right there before they graduate. All of these options provide valuable, marketable skills and are a win for our students and our community because they can enter the workforce right away. And outside of funding, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school district right now? Oof. I think it's that we're so divided um, as a community. I think we endured a pandemic that was unprecedented and the only way around it was straight through. Uh, there was no playbook on how to navigate it correctly and lots of strong feelings emerged. Um, I think now that divide has grown even deeper as, as new political issues arise. Board elections are intentionally designed to be nonpartisan, to put kids first and not politics. I think the only way to bridge this divide is to elect representatives that care deeply enough to listen to all perspectives, who, um, who have experience working in and for our schools, and who understand that all stakeholders matter, kids, parents, teachers, and taxpayers. My last question for you is, is what makes you uniquely qualified to serve on the board and most distinguishes you from your opponent in the race? Hmm. I think um, we all want um, kind, experienced, open-minded people on our board. Um, I have spent over 10 years volunteering in and for our schools, not because I ever intended to run for the board, uh, but because our family cares deeply about Blue Valley. Um, with three kids and over the decade, a decade in the district, I have experienced the curriculum at all levels. I know the schools, the staff, the teachers, and the parents, and most importantly, I know that the kids should be the center of everything that we do. Um, I've spent time in our classrooms, on our PTOs, on district level committees. I know there are things we are doing incredibly well, and some that we're working to improve. I think um, this is the perspective a board member needs, the background and context to know what we're doing well, what we're not doing as well, um, what has worked in the past and what hasn't, and have the passion to push us forward and continue to be better. Well, Lindsay, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this morning. Before we close, I want to give you a couple minutes to provide any final thoughts if you'd like. I think I would just close with, um, you know, we have recently had some school ratings come out from Niche.com, Blue Valley was ranked the best school district in Kansas, uh, the best teachers in Kansas, I think one of the top 100 school districts in the nation. These are some amazing accolades, and I think um, they are not an accident. As someone who has volunteered behind the scenes for many years, I think our district has worked incredibly hard for those honors, and not not to get the honors, but, but primarily for our kids. Um, we still have some work to do, truly some work to do, but I I'm honored to serve a district that works that hard for its kids and puts kids at the center of everything they do. Well, let me close by reminding everyone that advanced voting by mail begins on Wednesday, October 13th. Advanced voting in person begins on Saturday, October 23rd. And of course, Election Day is Tuesday, November 2nd. Mm -hmm.